pal what's up everybody so back again today with another video this is going to be a very interesting one for you guys because today i'm going to be talking about what white paint should you be using for your portraits now there's a variation of colors out there whether it's white paint red blue brown so on and so forth today we're going to focus on the white paint there's a few that i have in my collection and I'm going to be testing out exactly how each of them differ when applying them to your portraits. And from there, you can decide which one is best for you. And I'm also going to give my opinion on what I think is best when, when using white paint in your portraits. So what do we got? We got titanium white. Then we have radiant white. Then we also have some warm white. We also have some zinc white. Now, the thing with zinc white is that I don't really use it other than for my paint sketches or just my practice pieces. I never put zinc white in my main pieces that are commissions or that I'm going to be selling or featuring or, or whatnot. The zinc white just never goes into it. Now, some of you might be asking, well, why is that? Why is it that you use these whites, but you won't use this for your more serious work the reason is is that this isn't archival so this is mainly for my practice pieces so during my demonstrations i'm going to be focusing more on these three which is the warm the radiant and the titanium and i'm going to exclude the zinc white just because i pretty much never use it for any of my serious work so we're going to be focusing on these three mainly and we're going to be doing the demonstration with that and we're going to be seeing the results so before we get into everything just to remind you guys i am on patreon so go to that link in that bio i have some body art projects which is a, also a new venture for me make sure you go over there and support let's talk about the difference between each of these paints let's start off with the titanium white Titanium white is the more common of the whites used for painting. It's known for being bright white, almost bluish, and has excellent opacity and high tinting strength. When mixed with another color, it rapidly lightens the color. Now, just in case anybody was curious, let's talk about the zinc white. It's very transparent and has one tenth the tinting strength of titanium white. Zinc white, as I also mentioned before, is not archival. Now, let's go ahead and talk about this warm white. Warm white has a mixture of Hansa yellow, permanent orange, zinc white, and a base of safflower oil. Radiant white. Radiant white is a mixture of titanium dioxide, safflower oil, and it's very opaque in color with radiant white it usually gives a nice vibrancy to your paints when all right so i have my test swatch here and here i have each white so i have the titanium white the warm white the radiant and then the zinc the zinc and flake white are similar so keep that in mind for those of you that might be using flake white the color that i'm going to be using for the test is ultramarine blue the reason is is because ultramarine blue it's a very strong color and also this has multiple uses whether it's for portraits landscapes um, abstract work or whatever type of work you're doing so this goes a long way so I'm gonna be using this as a test so we're gonna put that for each swatch there and I'm also going to be using, this is um, some liquid. That's going to be my medium, just to spread things a little bit smoother. And then what we're going to do is, we're just going to have each of the white on the opposite side here, and then we're going to blend them out to the middle, and then we're going to see how each differ. So first up is our titanium white which we're just gonna spread a bit there. And then we're gonna spread a bit of our warm white. 
Then our radiant white down here. Then we're gonna use our zinc white, or as I said, some of you, it might be flake. Now see how that came out. Typically when you get something like that, you just give it a shake or you might want to put it on a palette and blend it out, not blend it out, but mix it. And then you'll start to get the paint. So already you can kind of see how each of these whites differ. The only two that have a common look to it and a common opaqueness is the titanium white and the radiant white. Let's go ahead and test this out. So I'm gonna move some of the blue there. I'm gonna move some of the white. Just take off some of that excess. So you see how the titanium white transitions over. Now we're gonna try the warm white, so I'm just gonna wipe the paint out there. Again, move it over to the middle, move the warm white. And this one is, it's a little bit darker, but not too much. You can't really see that much of a drastic change. Move on to our radiant white and zinc white. So again, I'm just moving it out to the middle and I have a bit of medium on my brush also. So we're gonna be moving it along. Now let's go over to our last one here, which is the zinc white. So again, moving it along. So let's take a look at the results and see what happens. So with the titanium white, we can see that the opaqueness of the white carried right through. Now with the warm white, that opaqueness still carried a bit through, but the camera's not picking it up. There's actually a small tint of yellow to it. Now with the radiant white, you can see that it looks similar to the titanium white. The opaqueness of the white is just not as strong. However, that carried right through. Now when we look at our zinc white, or for some of you guys, maybe the flake white, we see that the, the uh, ultramarine blue completely obliterated whatever opaqueness the zinc white had. Again, zinc white, flake white, not archival paints. So I'm not really surprised at that. But looking at these comparisons, the obvious one is that titanium white will contain, will maintain its opaqueness right through. To also add, when we look at our warm white, we can see that obviously, hence the name warm, it has a bit more warmthness compared to the other ones. Now, when I say non-archival non for the zinc or flake, that simply means over time that it's gonna flake, it's not gonna last, it's not gonna have longevity over time. So 50 years, 100 years from your painting, how many years, that white is not gonna be as opaque and you run the risk of it actually cracking and flaking off your canvas or whatever surface you're painting on. That's why many people do not use this white. So as we get into this part here where I'm gonna be doing the demonstration, I'm gonna be doing three portraits using three different whites. So for my skin mixing, I start off with burnt umber, cadmium yellow, cadmium red light. Then um, I use cadmium yellow light. And I also add ultramarine blue to my mix. Also with my mixture, of course, we're gonna be using the warm white. I'm gonna be pretty liberal with this and add 
a lot of it to the palette. Typically, I don't add too much. I kind of go along as I'm working, but I'm going to be adding a lot to the palette. Also, for my medium to make things kind of go a bit smoother, I'm going to be using some liquid. And I'm also going to have some ivory black. Typically, I mix my own black. I use um, burnt umber and ultramarine blue. But just for the sake of this demo, I'm just going to put ivory black on the palette. So here we go, mixing all the colors together before I introduce the white. And when I introduce the white, it's going to be gradual going from this dark color all the way down to a lighter color. If you guys are interested in seeing my color mixing tutorials for skin tones, you can check that out here. Um, I have about three tutorials up, but you can start off with this one where it shows you a good solid base. So we're just going to start off with some of the light areas and then we're going to work our way into the dark areas. I'm also going to introduce some of the warm white on its own in some of the areas as an extreme highlight, a highlight where the skin tone will, where is more defined in standing out. Now we're gonna go along and work with our radiant white. So I have the same colors that I use to mix my skin tone. And I pretty much did the same thing. Just started from a darker uh, brown and worked my way to a lighter tone. So same sort of deal here that we're doing, starting off with the light, then we're working our way up to the darker areas. Also gonna be using some of the radiant white to just fill in those extreme highlights and see how it pops. And also with these colors, what I'm doing is I'm using it the same combinations for the hair, the eyes, and the lips. So there's no other color that's added to it that's deviating the palette or anything. I'm just adding some cadmium red, cadmium yellow to the darkest brown, and that's what's giving me the color for my hair. So just finishing up going in with the titanium white. This is practically what everybody has in their color palette is titanium white. So we're just going to do a quick demo test with this. Now let's take a look at all three of our portrait demonstrations. So just judging from this, how does it look to you guys? To me, I can already see uh, some clear distinctions mainly with the warm white versus the radiant white and the titanium white. Now, it's a bit hard for you guys to see what I'm seeing through this camera lens, but from what I see, the radiant white versus the titanium, the titanium tends to be a tad bit dull, whereas the radiant, given its name, it tends to be a bit more brighter, but it's not that far off from the titanium white. Now, when we go over to the warm white and we compare all three, there's a clear distinction between all three of them where the warm white, hence the name, is much warmer, much more contrasted, and it stands out way more. And keep in mind too, I pretty much did an equal blending of all the whites for this demonstration. So there wasn't very much any deviation between all three of them when it came to the blending and mixing. So we pretty much got equal amount right across and you can see how each differ in the variations. But everyone, three different portraits done in warm white, radiant white and titanium white. And I've got to show you the difference between the three. And from here, you can decide what you feel would be best for your portraits. Personally, I typically go with the titanium white or I go with the warm white, depending on how contrasted my picture is and depending on how I want 
my portrait to look in terms of vibrancy. Now, typically, you know, people go with the titanium white. That's just what people have been taught, but never be afraid to mix it up. Never be afraid to try new things and introduce something new to your work. So with that said, thank you guys for watching. Make sure to subscribe. I'm trying to grow this to a thousand and beyond and I'll catch y'all in the next one. Peace.